Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be working on an RTS camera controller which will have the ability to move around and rotate using the keyboard keys, zoom in and out, rotate using the mouse, and edge scroll using the mouse. Pretty much everything that you would need to start making your own RTS. This one is gonna be a little heavy on coding, so if you need a quick brush up on your skills, I know a thing that can help you. Brilliant can help you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. And it's not just reading, you get to engage with hands-on problem solving, which is a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. A great mix of cool problems and competitive features will keep you motivated and on track. Learning engines like Godot can be difficult without a good understanding of coding concepts. And Brilliant's newly updated programming courses are a great way to build a foundation in coding, get experience with real-world applications, and learn to think like a programmer. So if this sounds like something that will help you achieve your goals, you can try Brilliant for free for 30 days using my referral code as well as get 20% off on an annual premium subscription once you see the benefits. So we're going to start off by outlining the node structure for the camera controller. We're going to need three node 3Ds and the first one is going to keep track of the central position of our camera and move around as well as rotate on the Y axis. The second one is going to be a child and will keep track of the X rotation of the camera. And then the third one will act as a pivot for the camera, offsetting it from the central point. It will also determine the base angle of the camera looking down, which will allow us to zoom in by simply moving the camera on the Z axis. So we're going to position it at a distance from the central point that we want and we'll angle it towards that point by changing its X rotation. Finally, we can add a camera as a child of this last node. So as a quick recap, the first node is going to move and rotate on the Y axis. The second node is going to rotate on the X axis. The third node is just there as a pivot and then the camera will zoom in and out by moving on the Z axis. So now that the setup is done, we can attach a script to the top camera position node and start on the coding. We're going to start off by creating on ready variables for the nodes and then define some other variables that will help us with camera movement. We will have a move speed variable that will define how fast the camera will move when we press the WAST or arrow keys and then have a variable for the movement target, which will help us interpolate the camera movement to make it smooth. We will leave it as an unassigned vector three until the ready function, where we can grab our starting position to be our starting movement target. After that, we can get started on the process function. Here, for every movement type, we are essentially going to do three steps. First, we'll figure out the direction that we want to move by getting inputs from the player, then we'll modify that direction using movement speed to get the target for movement and then interpolate towards that target for smooth transitions. To figure out the direction of movement for WASD keys and arrow keys, we are going to use the input get vector function on these actions. Don't forget to set the keys for these actions in the project settings, but what this function returns is a vector two based on the left right and up down axes. We are eventually going to rotate the camera left and right as well, so we will want to define where the forward direction is based on that rotation by multiplying this input direction by our transform. We will also convert it to a 3D vector so we can properly use it to change our position. And then all of this needs to be normalized to make sure that we are always using a direction vector of the same length. Then we just need to add this direction vector multiplied by our movement speed to our movement target. Then to interpolate, we set the position to the result of the linear interpolation function while passing it our current position our target position and the proportion of distance that we want to move by every frame. And with that, we can now move around. If the movement feels too floaty, feel free to raise the last parameter in the lerp function to something like 0.1 
or even higher. The next input type we are going to work on are the Q and E rotation keys. For this we are going to need a rotation speed variable and a target variable, which this time will be a float because we are only keeping track of the rotation degrees on the Y axis. Set the target to the starting value and the ready function like before and let's move on to the physics process. Here we can use the get axis function which returns either negative 1, 0 or 1 based on the combination of inputs that are currently pressed to figure out which way the player wants to rotate. Then we want to add this rotation direction times rotation speed to our rotation target. Just like before, interpolate the current rotation to the target rotation. And don't write equals instead of plus equals like me or you're gonna have bugs. So now we can rotate using our Q and E keys. So let's move on to zooming in and out. You kind of know the drill here. We are going to need a zoom speed and a zoom target variables. But in addition to those, we are also going to use minimum and maximum zoom variables. Set the starting zoom target to the starting Z position of the camera and let's move on to getting the inputs. With the scroll wheel, which we're going to use here for zooming, it's a little more tricky. Godot only keeps track of the released event for the mouse wheel, which means that we can't use the input get access function here. So instead, we are going to make our own get access function with blackjack by subtracting scroll wheel up released from scroll wheel down released, both of them cast to integers. Multiply the zoom direction by zoom speed to get the target, and then linear interpolate their current zoom to the target zoom. So now that this works, let's move on to rotating the camera with the mouse. For this, we are just going to need a mouse sensitivity variable. And since the best way to track the movement of the mouse is in the unhandled input function, we are going to write the code for this here. In this case, we'd want to rotate the camera when the mouse moves, so we're going to check that the input event is of that type, and we are also going to check that the mouse wheel is pressed down. For rotating left and right here, we can actually change the rotate keys target variable, and from it we are going to subtract the position of the mouse relative to last frame times sensitivity. When we move the mouse up and down, however, we want to change the rotation of the second node in the hierarchy in the same way. And then finally, we want to make sure that our up and down rotation doesn't go past certain values. For this, we can use the quam function, which will not let our variable go past the minimum or the maximum. Now we can use the mouse to rotate the camera in game. The only thing I don't like about this is that the mouse is visible while we are rotating the camera away. Like this. Usually it's supposed to be hidden while the middle mouse button is down. So in the process function we are going to check if the middle mouse button was just pressed and then set the mouse mode to captured. And then when the middle mouse button is released we are going to set the mouse mode to visible. That looks way better now. So the last thing that we need to implement here is edge scrolling with the mouse. We will need an edge size in pixels and a scroll speed. To check if the mouse is hitting the edge of the screen, we are going to need to get the mouse position with this function and we are going to need to calculate the coordinates of each of the screen edges by getting the size of the screen and either adding or subtracting the edge size from it. We are going to create a scroll direction vector 3 that starts out as a zero vector, but then we'll check if the mouse is touching any of the edges with four if statements and adjust this vector accordingly. So if the mouse position x is smaller than our 5 pixel edge size, that means that the mouse is touching the left side of the screen. If the mouse position x is greater than the size of the screen minus our 5 pixel edge size, then the mouse is touching the right side of the screen. And it works the exact same way for the y coordinate. Now that we have a scroll direction, we can simply add it to the move target after multiplying it by scroll speed and the rotation of our camera. And with that, we are able to move the camera using edge scrolling and our controller is complete. As always, you can find all of the source code on my Patreon, link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like because that helps a lot. And if you want to know how I made this low poly island, you can check out this tutorial. I'll see you next time.